So today let's talk about pest and pest management. Currently you will find uh, nearly in 90% of the farms around they they are using the conventional ways of pest management and those are user of uh, pesticides uh, others are using herbicides uh, chemicals that in as much as they are saying they have a withdrawal period where they tell us that you don't find traces of the the, the chemicals in your plants i still find this very and say for humans and also for our environment and it is why we are pushing people to understand and appreciate why it is important to uh, to manage our pests the best way protecting our environment protecting ourselves and also protecting the the the, the climate uh, for instance uh, you will find people who spray their their crops with pesticides uh, to kill aphids These pesticides that don't only kill the pest, the aphids in the crops, they kill even the microorganisms that are not there to destroy your your, your plant, but actually there to help in your soil rejuvenation. What happens is, naturally, our soil have microorganisms that help in fixation of important nutrients in our soils, and we all can agree that. We depend on our soils for us to feed, for us to increase our productivity. It all starts with the soil. So if we damage our soils, then that means we will be hungry. We will be a hungry nation. So by the end of this video, I will show you, I will guide you on how you can make green tea, which is easy to do at home and can be used for small-scale farmers and large-scale farmers. First we'll understand what is a pest and a pest is any microorganism or an organism that infests on your crop and damages them. So there are a lot of organism you will find in your crops but not all of them are there to damage your crop. So those are not considered pests. Pests are only those uh microorganism or organism that destroy the plant. So today let's talk about Uh, the integrated pest management methods that are available we currently have three that are very convenient and are safe for the human and also for the environment and these include the biological control the cultural control and the mechanical or the physical control we are going to start by discussing what biological control is and this is the use of living organism so we can group them into three those are microbials macrobials and natural substance microbials are those li very microscopic living organism like fungi bacteria and viruses you'll find there are fungi that are very useful when it comes to fighting pest in the macrobials you'll find that they use insects to control these pests when we look at insects you'll find insects like ladybird and uh, and wasps ladybird consumes the aphids but what the wasp does it lays its eggs on top of uh, of the pests eggs so the pest eggs eggs don't get to hatch natural substance these are extracts that can be extracted from animals and plants for example there are people who rear rabbits and they use the rabbit urine to spray on their crops this repels the pests plant extract is for example an onion an onion naturally repels the the, the pests an onion rosemary herbs like rosemaries these are natural repellents to pests the importance of this control the biological control is the fact that they are very targeted and specific this means that they have a specific pest that they are going to be dealing with they are cost effective they are not uh, expensive since they are readily available they are very safe to use because you can literally spray your 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 crop in the morning and 10 minutes later you harvest it and consume it the other method is the cultural method of pest management which includes uh, resistant variety tillage hand picking of the 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 pests 
trapping the best and mostly mulching. How does it work? When you use a, a variety that is resistant to particular pest, then it will mean it will be difficult for that pest to manifest in that crop. By mulching, you discourage a lot of development of weeds, and weeds are the biggest carriers and hatching points for these pests. So if there are no weeds, then it means there will be controlled pests. We can also hand pick. This is by making sure you uproot the infected crop and throwing it away. Uh, use of traps. There are traps that are readily available. You can uh, put them in the farm and they will attract the pest to them. Another thing is by crop rotation. This is very important because different crops, different variety of crops are affected by different kind of pests. So if you find your crop is affected by pests, the next season do not return the same crop or, the, or a crop that is of the same family. Rotate it with a different crop. The process of making green tea. So we are going to start by what are the ingredients. You will need Tythonia, you will need neem, Mexican marigold or either of the two. You can use garlic, chili and the combination will need soap or aloe vera as the sticky part of the, the recipe. So this stickiness will help the, 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 the liquid stick on the plant or on the skin of the paste. Make sure you chop them into small pieces. You can add in garlic. Garlic smell is a very strong repellent and it also helps in irritating the skin of the pests as well as chilies. Use the red, make sure you use the red chilies. You will need two parts of the chopped mixture of titania, neem or Mexican gold mixed with one part of water. Mix all the ingredients together and squeeze all the juices and cover and put separate the liquid to a different container. Cover the container and let it ferment for 24 hours. It will be ready for use the next day. So the fermented solution, you will need one part of it to be diluted with two parts of water for the spraying of your crops. So what are the advantages of making the green tea? It is very easy to make. The ingredients are readily available. The fact that you can spray and harvest your crop and eat, consume it, wash and eat it instantly is also an advantage. And also it can be used for small scale farmer, the urban farmers and also the large scale farmer. So guys, if you enjoyed our video, make sure to remember to like, comment below and don't forget to subscribe.